test it out? Did you test one out? No, I've had them before with wafers. Shit, I don't, last time I had them with the wafers are not dry. Yeah. Not a vanilla wafer or anything like that? <laughs> All right. Have anybody on board? Yeah, one. Well, well, good evening. Welcome to Sandy Branch, as we say here at the Branch. And we are happy to be here. We are going through John, John chapter, well, we're getting ready to finish up John chapter 15, and we're going into chapter 16. So I'm excited about it tonight. Um, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Um, and um, let's see. So tomorrow night, and I'll go ahead and give some announcements out here. So tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, we are going to have a Christmas Eve um, celebration here at the church. Uh, we will have it broadcast on Facebook Live, I think. Uh, yes, and I've been given the nod. And um, we are also going to do the, um, uh, the, the transmission, uh, radio transmission out in the parking lot. So... Uh, we're, we're going to cover all ends here, and then we're going to have the inside as well. Now, we're going to have uh, the Lord's Supper, and um, we're going to sing, and we're going to, I'm going to talk about uh, Christ coming into the world, and uh, why he came as a baby, and so I'm excited about that, and I'm looking forward to that, and we got a special little gift for you, so uh, please... Uh, make sure that you're here. Um, and that is at 6 o'clock. We will probably start the videoing or the, the Facebook Live thing here uh, at, what, 5.55. 5 yeah. Usually uh, about five minutes before we start the service. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing you all there if you come. And uh, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, let's see, what else? So we will be... We will have service Sunday as well. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Wow. It's like a, it's like old times here. We got Bible on almost every day. That's good. And was it Sunday, Sunday night, and Wednesday, and and Tuesday night, uh, visitation and man, it would be nice to get something like that again. But uh, but anyways, because I, I I mean, really in all honesty, I like coming to church. I remember, uh, I think my church still does that back at home in, in Jacks, Jacksonville. Um, but uh, anytime the doors were open, I wanted to be there. So I, they were giving us food. You know, you're paying $3 for food. I was going to be there. And we we're going to Bible study. I was going to be there. We have a choir. I'm going to be there. And I just liked being there. It was great. I wanted to learn. I wanted to hang out with all the all the peeps. So, um, so that... Uh, that is going to happen Sunday. We're going to have Sunday service, and that is at, um, we'll have Sunday school at 10.15. We'll start at 10.10 on Facebook Live. See, I'm going to get these times one day. And then we will start um, the 11 o'clock service uh, here on Facebook Live. It'll be 10.55. So be there or be square. Okay. Well, uh, let's since we've gotten all that out of the way, I don't think there's any more announcements to be made. Nope, nope, no more announcements to be made. So we are going to go to the Lord in prayer. Please be in prayer for Joe Dunn. Um, Joe has uh, come down with COVID. He is uh, doing pretty well, I guess, right now, uh, from what I've heard. Um, he, uh, it, it, uh, for a while there, it was uh, it was kind of crazy for him, but he's doing seems to be doing pretty well now. Um, let's see. Uh, pray for uh, Gary Loposse and Gary um, and um, trying to think who else here. Oh yeah, and Danny Moore, and um, and also please pray for uh, Mr. Cheek, Mr. Jimmy Cheek. And um, continue praying for him. Um, 
And I think that's about it, really. Yeah, if if there is a, if there's somebody I forgot, please forgive me. Uh, we will. Uh, I'll have to write these things down, but I think that's about it. Pray for Norma as well, if you would. Um, well, I think that's about it. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll lift these people up, and we'll ask God to bless our time together. Father in heaven, I thank you for this time that we can come together and study your word. I thank you that you have given us your word. I thank you that Jesus Christ is the word. And that in the beginning he was with you. And, and uh, Lord, I, I thank you that you sent him to save a people for himself, for yourself. But Father, I thank you that uh, you sent him to pay that price. It was a hefty price of his life. But Lord, you have rewarded him. You have given all things to him because he lived and fulfilled your commandments. He lived a perfect life. He died the perfect death. And he rose again to be ascended next to you, sitting on the throne in control of all things. So Father, I, I thank you that you have done that for us. Father, I thank you that you have saved us. Those who truly believe, those who hold fast to the faith, Father, that's what it's all about. And we'll get to study that tonight as well, is that it's all about believing. It's all about trusting you. It's not about what we do. It's about trusting you. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you that you have done that for us. I thank you again, Lord, that you have sent your word into our lives and, and, and proclaimed your goodness through your word. You've proclaimed also your judgment through your word. And so, Father, I pray that we continue to, to seek you, to know you, Father, and to know that there is a judgment that's coming and that we must go out into the world and proclaim uh, that there is this judgment that's coming. And so, Father, I thank you that you have given us that job to do. Father, I lift up those who are sick, who are ill, who, are, uh, who need healing. Lord, I, I ask that you touch them, that you uh, heal them in a mighty way, and that they may glorify you. I ask, Lord, that all of your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven, Father, and that your kingdom will come here on earth as it is in heaven. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, we are in John 15. We're getting, a, we're getting ready to finish up John 15. Uh, now, we need to think about what we've been reading, what we've been studying. Now, uh, just to go back a little bit, he's with his disciples. He's uh, in the upper room. They're having uh, the Last Supper. And uh, he is telling them how much he loves them. He is proclaiming to them his love. And he's telling promise. He's given promise after promise uh, to them. And uh, then he gets up and they get ready to leave. And as they're leaving, they're, as they're on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane, he tells them that he is the true vine. And that anyone that is plugged into him, anyone that is in him, that abides in him, will have life that flows through them and fruit coming out on the other side. And those who are not abiding in him will be cut away and thrown into the fire. So these are, these are things that uh, he, he's explaining to them. And then he goes into how they are to love one another. Because you have to remember now, Christ is getting ready to leave. And he's getting ready to leave his disciples. And he's telling them, look, this is what's going to happen. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be dismayed. You know, he, he's telling them that I am providing a way for you to, to the Father. 
I'm going to provide that way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through him. He's telling them all of this now. He's comforting them, comforting them. Okay, this is his love for them. And, he's, and, he, and this whole time he's giving them promises. He's telling them, look, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to come back to you. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to the Father, and and the Father is going to send the Holy Spirit. He is with you, and he will be in you, is what he's telling his disciples. He's also telling his disciples that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit will be in them uh, because of uh, they are one. The Father, Son, and Spirit are one. And so what you see here is he's telling them, that, that they should love one another to keep his commandments. If you keep my commandments, you are going to uh, abide in my words. He says, my father is glorified by this, that you're going to produce much fruit. And um, he says, just as I have loved my father and the father has loved me, he says, I love you as well. Now abide in that love. And he says, if you keep my commandments in verse 10, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. See, Christ had love for the Father, and he wanted to fulfill the commandments of for the Father. He loved the Father. This is how much he loves the Father. Okay? He fulfilled all the commandments. He, he, went, he, he uh, um, uh, lived that perfect life, okay, and did everything that the Father had told him to do. And so, and he says, here's my command. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Okay, remember, it used to be, that this is a new commandment that he's given them. He says, it used to be, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself, right? And now, um, and, and now what we're seeing here is that we are to love one another, and this is the brethren. We are to love the brethren, one another, just as he loves us us okay and that is a love of sacrifice that is a love of, of of forgiveness when you think about what he did for his disciples his disciples ran away from him you know in the garden of gethsemane and um and and it, it even says in in like i think it was mark's account that one guy just got up and ran off he was naked and ran away imagine seeing that you know, but that's, yeah, he wanted to get away. And you, know, you think about they're, they're not there at the cross. He's betrayed. He is, uh, you know, uh, he's been um, denied by Peter, betrayed by Judas. And, but here's the thing, you know, and, um, he forgives Peter. He forgives Peter and um, he forgives his disciples. And while they're, spitting at him and and uh, people are mocking him and pulling at his beard and all these things and they're scourging him and all of this he's forgiving he's, he's pouring out his love upon them he's his this forgiveness upon them but he loves his disciples and this like i said there's a forgiveness there's a sacrificial love that he has for them he says greater love had no has uh, no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. And then he goes on to say that you are my friends. Everything that the Father has told me, I have, I have given to you. I have told you everything that the Father has told me to say to you. He says, I no longer call you slaves, but I call you friends. And that intimacy, there's a, it, it, you know, we could see that we're part of the household of God in Ephesians. It, we're, we're, we're part of this household of God. We're no longer the slaves. We're, we, we, know it, we know the mysteries of God. We know the mysteries of the kingdom. We know what's going on, what's going to take place, what has taken place. All this we know because we believe, because we have faith. And so, and then he tells them, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit. Now, here's the, here's the point now. Now we're starting to narrow it down. And what he's saying is, I chose you for a purpose. I chose you. You didn't choose me, but I came to you and chose you, and I've got a job for you to do. And you're going to go out, and you're going to bear fruit. Now think about their fruit, okay? Think about their fruit right now. They go out, 
and they proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. They go out and pronounce judgment upon the world through the Spirit of God, and, and which we'll see. So you see all this happening, and people get saved. Right away, Peter preaches, 3,000 people get saved. And then all of a sudden, people get saved from those people, and so on and so on and so on. It's like that commercial, you know, the, the, if you tell somebody about this shampoo, and they'll tell somebody, and so on, and so on, and so on, and it's just this, you know, this this multiplication that's taken place. And the, the beauty of it all is it, it's, it, that's counted as fruit for them. That them, or me receiving the gospel, and me coming to life, and being, and, and believing, right, and having faith, because what was given to me, uh, I, I, I am a fruit of Peter and John and Andrew and Paul. I mean, it just it truly is amazing. And you think about um, the guy that led Billy Graham to, to Christ, right? And how many people did Billy Graham lead to Christ? Well, nobody knows the, the guy that led Billy Graham to Christ. Do y'all know his name? I don't know his name. Um, but somebody led him to Christ. And um, and told him that there was a judgment coming that that uh, that um, that Christ has has uh, died. He's paid the price, and Billy Graham believed. But through Billy Graham, there's just I would say thousands, ten thousands of people have come, including myself. Basically, I mean, I I think Billy Graham played a big part in my life. I mean, I, I can tell you the story. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, but he, I think he played a big part in my life, uh, just watching this one episode. So there's fruit and we don't know, we, we may water here and, 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 um, and, and then somebody reap a harvest, uh, you know, later on in life. I, I may throw a seed out and, and it just sit there for a while and then somebody comes along and waters it or whatever and then all of a sudden there's life. Um, we, we just don't know. But we're, we've been told that we've been going out, we're, we're going to go out and bear fruit. Now, this is the mission. This is the mission of God. This is what we are supposed to be doing. We, uh, Jesus Christ said, I came to seek and to save those which are lost. Okay, that's that was his job. That was his purpose to seek and to save those which are lost. He even said, "This is my. This is the reason why the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those which are lost." And we, as servants, we as disciples, um, we don't do anything different than the Master. And so, what he's doing is he's he's get he's he's, he's telling them, "I'm getting ready to leave, but I'm not going to leave you alone." I've got the Holy Spirit that, I, that we're going to send to you. And he's going to live inside of you. And uh, you're going to go out and be witnesses. And you're going to go out and testify. And so um, that's that's the, the what we're kind of narrowing it, funneling it down to. All right. And so he says the world's going to hate you because of, you know, it hated him first. It hated Jesus first. So the world's going to hate you. The world's going to persecute you, and so um, you know, and they're and they're going to do it uh, even in the name of God, right? They're going to do it even in the name of God. They're going to persecute and kill, and we see that. I mean, I can even see it through the Catholic Church throughout the the history. Uh, the Catholic Church um, were wiping people out left and right in the name of God. But these people stood on faith. These people stood on uh, sola scriptura. They, you know, they they uh, which is uh, scripture alone. You know, they they defied the 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 Catholic Church, and um, they said, uh, you know, we're not going to do this anymore. This is wrong, and so people started getting killed left and right for standing up for the Word of God. And it goes on today. I mean, there's places out in, in the Muslim countries. You have uh, people getting killed, uh, churches being blown up, uh, Christians being beheaded. Uh, you know, you've got China, who's um, 
you know, there's an underground church in China. Uh, they're they're not allowed to worship out in, you know, they they'll go they would go to prison if they they were caught worshiping God. Uh, so there there it's throughout the whole world and even our world today, even in the United States, it's it's starts starting to that that uh, separation from church and state is deteriorating and state is coming in and telling the church what it should be doing and how it should be living and uh, I was reading an article the other day where um, the, the the government the legislation uh, legislature in uh, Virginia is telling all the churches that they have to they have to hire uh, transgender and homosexuals and people uh, and, and there's things that they have to do uh, and, um, uh, and and I mean and the churches are, are, are if they don't comply they get fined a hundred thousand dollars I mean that's that, that's what our world is coming to you know and um, in Texas, there were, and I think it was Houston, Texas, the mayor at one time, uh, who was lesbian, and uh, she was on the attack of the churches, and she, she wanted to know, she wanted to have the the pastors send her the sermons that they were going to preach uh, in, in the on that Sunday to see if it was okay, and, and but that didn't pass, and then and the, you know, the the churches stood up for that, but. But, I mean, it, it, it's a constant. There's just going to be this constant um, tearing down, tearing down, trying to tear down uh, because we, uh, we worship the one true God. We uh, value family. We value life. Uh, you know, we, and, and uh, so we're going to be attacked. We're going to be attacked for things like that. And it happens. Um, again, last week I told you the, the world hates you. The world does not like you. Uh, they should not like you. Let me put it that way. But we have too many churches out there right now that are trying to, oh, world, love us. Love us, world. Love us. And um, and, and I think it's so wrong. I think it, it's time that we uh, stop using the bride of Christ as a, a harlot. And, um, and and stop trying to, to use her to attract the world and I, I don't I don't think we should be using her to attract the world. Uh, I think the world um, is, is going to hate us and in, in reality uh, they're they're going to hate us. And so but Christ tells them, look, they hated me without a cause. They hated him without a cause. He did not do anything to them except bring judgment as far as the, you know, his, uh, he says, I, I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. But just because that he was here and because he was preaching the truth, the world does not like to hear the truth. And we hear that today. We see that today. You can't say anything without the world hating you, you can't say any kind of truth without the world saying, well, that's your truth. Oh, that's your truth. I'm like, well, I mean, truth is truth. It's not my truth or your truth. It's, it's truth. You know, there is only two genders. That is the truth. There's not any more. There's not 60 genders. Okay, there's male and female. Now, people are delusional, and they may think they're a banana or a cat or a woman or a man when they're not. But that's delusional. That's not the truth. So we sit and we hold fast to the truth. And so uh, when we say things about, you know, when we bring the truth, uh, the, the world doesn't like that at all. So... Christ says, I'm sending you the helper. I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. Okay, verse 26. Uh, let's start there. That was a very long introduction. <laughs> but it was a uh, catch-up. Let's uh, we'll just do a little catch-up here. Um, so in verse 26, when the helper comes, 
whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth. I want you to get that right there. In fact, you can underline that in your Bible. That is the Spirit of truth. And we've talked about the Spirit of truth. Go back to verse four, I mean chapter 14. And then he says here in verse 16, I will ask the Father, and he will send you another helper, and that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth. Underline that. Whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him. He's talking to his disciples. You know him. Why? Because he abides with you and will be in you. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So the spirit of God, the spirit of truth, it says here that the Father, he will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. Okay? Then it says here in verse uh, 26, whom I, that when the helper comes, whom I will send to you. Okay? So the Father, the Son, they're all one. Okay? The Spirit, they're all one. Now here's the beauty of it. This word here, uh, when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father. Okay, this word is para. And para is, um, it, it means from. Now think about, think about parallel lines. Okay, parallel lines are lines that never meet. Uh, they're, they're constant as far as they're, the, they're, they're next to each other. And, um, but, uh, this, this pair, this is where we get the word para, uh, they're next to each other. And so, uh, parallel lines, okay, P-A-R-A. -A. And this is where we get the word, uh, parallel or para, next to. It's, um, uh, it, it comes from this word para, and it means from, uh, where he says, uh, that I will send to you from the Father, it actually means next to or beside. So the Holy Spirit, although they are one, they are also uh, they also have their own uh, persons. Okay, so the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are all one God. They are all one God in three persons, and so. When it says that the Son will go and sit next to the Father on the throne, uh, He's going to be sitting next to the Father, and the, the Spirit of God is going to be sent from the Father, who is sitting next to the Father, and He's going into the world, and He is going to perform uh, these marvelous, marvelous acts that He's doing right now. Okay? Um, like you think about in... in um, John chapter 3, John chapter 3, where we talk a little bit about, or, or Jesus is talking about the, the Spirit, and um, yeah, John 3, um, yeah, gotta get there, he says, um, Uh, unless uh, in verse 5 Jesus answered truly truly I say to you unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God and he says that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit do not be amazed that I said to you you must be born again he says the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Okay, this is the, uh, one of the first times he starts talking about the Spirit of God. And uh, Jesus is talking about it. And so what you see here is that every believer, every single believer has to be born of the Spirit in order to, uh, to have faith. And he says, you, you must be, when it says here, you must be born again, that word actually means you must be born from above. 
You must be born from above. It's the Spirit of God that, that awakens you. Because the Bible says that we are all dead men. We are dead men. We don't seek after God. We're not looking for God. That's you and me. That's everyone. Everyone. Nobody seeks after God. And if you seek after God, it's because the Spirit of God has awakened you and given you eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to receive. Okay? So I want you to see this. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And the flesh is flesh. Flesh is worthless. Okay? But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. The wind blows where it wishes. You don't know where the wind comes from or where it's going. You hear it. You see the, the trees blowing. You see the effects of it. But it's the same thing with, with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God goes wherever it wishes. And you see the effects of it. You see somebody coming to life. And you see fruit in their life for, from it. Because uh, the Spirit is moving in their life. And so this is, uh, these are things that we, we have to understand about the Spirit. So here he is. He's called the Helper, an Advocate, an Intercessor, um, a Comforter. I would say more of an Advocate or an Intercessor uh, when it comes to comfort. Yeah, I mean, he's there to comfort, but more of an, of an Advocate. Or intercessor. So he says, uh, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is one standing next to the Father, beside the Father, he will come from the Father. That is the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. There is that word again, para, or para. It's um, from the Father. He will testify about me. Okay? He is going to... Uh, he is going to testify about Jesus Christ. He is going to be the witness of Jesus Christ. He is going to tell you everything about Jesus Christ. To a believer, um, he will proclaim to you all that you need to know about Jesus Christ through the Word of God. We have the Word of God. Um, I, I, I want to be careful here because a lot of people use the Spirit... To say, oh, the Spirit told me to tell you. When you when people start saying that to you, uh, run. Okay, run far away. Uh, but the it's it's one of those things where if the if 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 the Spirit of God is dwelling within me, then the Spirit of God is going to press upon my heart. It, I, he's not gonna he's not gonna use somebody else to tell me w what to do and how to live. Okay, and we have the Word of God, and if it doesn't match up to the Word of God, um, then, like I said, run away, run far, far away. Um, uh, I'm, I'm always leery of people who start telling me the Spirit of God told me to tell you, and I'm like, ah. okay. Um, so, but we have God's Word, and again, the Spirit of God dwells within every, 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 every believer. I want you to know this. I want you to understand this. Okay? Um, it says here that um, He will send the Helper, the Advocate, the Intercessor, and He will testify about Jesus. He's going to testify about Jesus. He's going to tell you everything you need to know about Jesus. He says, now here's the thing. Verse 27. He's going to testify about Jesus, right? He's going to let the world know about Jesus. And He says here, and you, you will testify also. You will testify also because you have been with me from the beginning. Now, again, people will say, He's talking to the disciples. He's not talking to uh, believers in the future. But that's just not true. Okay? How did you hear, or how did you become a believer? Let me ask you that. Somebody came to you and told you the truth. The, the spirit of truth came to you through somebody it might have been through the Word of God. It might have been through somebody. 
But what they did was they proclaimed Jesus Christ. They proclaimed everything, the judgment that was coming, and, and, and what Christ has done to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, what he's done. And you think about this. And, and so you heard it from somebody. Remember Paul says, how can they believe if they have not heard? And how have they not heard if we don't send a preacher? Right? Somebody to proclaim that gospel. And so Paul understood it. The disciples understood it. Timothy understood it. We have to, we have to uh, go out and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to go out and proclaim what he's done. That, this is the point. Every single one of us are missionaries. I want you to see this. We don't just send money to those people who are missionaries overseas or anything like that. Okay? We are all missionaries. We are all on a mission. A mission to uh, grow the kingdom of God. Remember what Christ said? Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Okay, what she's talking about, food, clothing, okay, all the food, food, clothing, shelter, all that stuff's going to be added to you. You're going to have that stuff. Be why? Because you're seeking first his kingdom. And that kingdom is not a, a place. That kingdom are, are, is people. Okay, we're seeking people and we're seeking his righteousness. We, we want to be more like him and we want to do what he was doing which was seeking and saving those which are lost. That's what we want to do. That's what we should be wanting to do. And you're going to continually hear that from me because there is no other job that we need to do. Okay? There is no other job other than to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we do that through our good works. We do that through our actions as far as we do the work. And we don't just do the work and say, here you go. Because Buddhists do really good work, and Hindus do really good work, but they don't bring a good news with that work. Neither one of them. You know, Muslims, they they, they give, they give alms uh, to the poor, and they, they do they do good good work, but uh, they don't do a good work backed with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if we just lay a good work in front of them without giving them the gospel of Jesus Christ or how to escape judgment, right? What good is that good work? It, it's not good at all. It's worthless. So the works that we do are to be able to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and to let people know there is a judgment that's coming. Okay? Okay. So, and, and, and I want to tell you this because it, Hebrews talks about uh, the, the, the word of God was spoken through the prophets and, you know, and, and to the fathers and old times, you know, and now it's spoken to us through, the, through Jesus Christ, through his son, Jesus. And, um, but what you see is the word that was given, the word that was, that, uh, was given to the fathers back in that day is a word of judgment. And we'll get into that when we get a little bit further. But it was a word of judgment. It was that judgment is coming and there is a way to escape judgment. Um, you know, well, we'll, like I said, we'll get into that. We'll, we'll talk more about that when we get into 16. But here... We will testify. We will testify also because you have been with me from the beginning. Um, turn real quick like to 1 John 1, 1 through 4. 1 John, it's near Revelation. And uh, right before Jude, or actually right before 2 and 3 John. But 1 John, um, I think it was, I say, chapter... One, yes, chapter one, one through four. It says here, 
what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, again, I want you to underline uh, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, underline that, what we have seen, underline that, with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched, underline that, with our hands, concerning the word of life. So, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at, what we have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, and the life was manifested. This is Jesus Christ being the word of life. The life was manifested. In other words, it, it took on flesh. The, the, the life took on flesh. Jesus Christ, who is life, took on flesh, was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also. Why? So that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. So what, what John is saying here is he, is he is saying that I am a testifier. I testify. I am giving a testimony to you. And I am proclaiming it to you because I have touched him, I have heard him, I have seen him. I heard all his words, I saw what he did, and I have touched him with my own hands. And he says, and the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim. You can underline that, seen and testify and and proclaim to you. Okay, that is to to the world. We go and we 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 tell them what we have seen, what we testify, and what we proclaim. Okay, and and it is eternal life. Right, knowing Jesus Christ and the Father is having eternal life. John seventeen three. Okay, so it is eternal life, and it, it, which was with the Father, this is Jesus Christ, and was manifested to us. Remember, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. He is the life. He not only has life, right? He is the life. And it says here, the life was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So what John is saying here is like, I'm proclaiming to you, Jesus Christ, because I want you to have that fellowship that I have. I want you to have the life that I have. I want you to have the joy that I have. And my joy will be made complete, is what he says in verse 4. And our joy will be made complete. That When you believe, when you believe and you have eternal life, there is a joy there. And it is a joy that can only come from God. Because Christ says uh, that his joy will be in you. Well, Christ's joy is the Father. And so the Father will be in us. Uh, we will have the joy of the Son. We will have the joy of the Father. The same joy that the Father has for His Son, He has for us. The same joy that the Son has for the Father, He has for us. And we have that same joy for the Son and the Father as well. There's a fellowship that's going on. And he says, we proclaim this to you so that you can be part of this fellowship. So that you can have eternal life. That's what we do. That's what we do. We testify. 
We testify and we proclaim Jesus Christ. Here, um, he says, um, These things I have spoken to you so that, in verse 16, I mean verse 1, chapter 16, he says, These things I have spoken to you so that you may be kept from stumbling. And he's telling them, he knows, he knows it's going to be hard, that, that, that they're going to be persecuted, they're going to, they're going to be hated, they're going to be sought after, um, they're going to be afraid, Jesus is going to, to, uh, to be killed, and he's going to rise again, um, and he's going away, but he's telling them, look, I'm telling you these things so that you won't stumble. I'm telling you so that you'll know that what I told you was the truth. Okay? And then these things are going to happen. Listen. Verse 2. They will make you outcast from the synagogue. He goes right back into it. He says, look, they are going to throw you out of the synagogue. He says, but an hour is coming for everyone who kills you. There it is. And like, Ugh. And I'm surprised the disciples didn't go, wait, oh, you, you, what? What? You said something about killing us. What? He says, But an hour is coming for everyone who kills you to think that he is offering service to God. There he goes. He says it again. He, they, they, they're killing you in my name. They feel like they're offering service to God by getting rid of you. And um, he says, These things they will do because they have not known the Father or me. And yet they're doing these things in the name of God. But they do not know God, nor do they know his Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 4, But these things I have spoken to you, why? So that when their hour comes, when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them. These things I do not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. Now get this. These things I have spoken to you so that when their hour comes, when they're standing before these people who are going to kill them, right? It says you may consider or you may remember that I told you of them. They're going to remember what Christ said as they're being put on trial, and slaughtered. And, I mean, it's it's sad. I mean, think about all the disciples. Every one of them died, um, were murdered, except John. And he was put on the island of Patmos to, uh, to, in, 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 uh, to live out his life there as a, as a prisoner of this island. Um, you think about Stephen, who was um, who was killed, stoned? Think about um, I think James. James was uh, was one of the first. I think he was beheaded. Uh, quick like. And so I mean, you think about all this, and it's just you think about the Nero, and you think about the the gladiators and the, those games and where they would use Christians and slaughter them and have animals eat them and, uh, you know, it, just things like that where they would throw Christians on stakes, you know, and light them on fire. I mean, again, these are, these are horrible events that happened. But Christ told them that this was going to happen. That this was going to happen. And they took all the way to their death. They went all the way and had faith all the way to their death. Uh, that That's something to really be... I'm impressed by that. I really am. Uh, that, that's pretty impressive to me. Um, verse 5. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? None of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Well, yeah. 
I mean, you just told me that they're going to kill me? Um, and you're going to leave me? Uh, you know, that we're going to deny you? Things like that. I mean, it's just... Uh, um, I, I could see these guys. I mean, the, the, this night was just a horrible night for them. Um, I can only imagine what they were thinking, right? And, and, and what, they were, what they were going through. We read this, like, you know, it's like, oh, and, you know, sorrow filled their heart. But, I mean, they were literally probably just broken. I mean, they had no idea that, that Christ had to die. He had been telling him this, but they're like, no, no. They're, they're probably putting it behind them. And, you know, like Peter said, no, oh, far be it from you, Lord, that you should die. You're not going to die. We're not going to let you, oh, I'll fight for you and all this. But that was his purpose of coming was to save. That's how he was going to save people. But the, the, the Jews thought our Messiah doesn't die. Our Messiah comes and destroys and he and he sets up his kingdom and rules forever and and this is our messiah this is what we think the messiah should be but you're telling me that that uh that you're going to die you're going to leave we're going to be killed I mean, that's heartbreaking to them i sympathize with these guys and you too should should sympathize with them it was horrible. But here he, he's comforting them. He's, 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 uh, he, he's telling them how much he loves them. And he's promising them so much. Okay, these are promises that he's given them. He says in verse 7, But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. There it is. He says, if I go, I will send him to you. So you have the Father sending him and the Son sending him. Because they're all one. And he's saying to them, look, it is to your advantage that I do go. Because... Uh, uh, He's going to be living inside of you. He's going to change your heart. He's going to cleanse you. He's going to do all these great things with you. Is it, if, if I stick around, the Spirit cannot come and you cannot do the work that, that, that was prepared for you, is what he's telling them. And he told them, he said, you are going to do greater works than I. And you think, well... Jesus healed the, the, the sick and the blind and the, he raised the dead, but that, that's not what he's talking about. Those aren't the works that he's talking about. The works that he's talking about is that the gospel is going to go out into the world through them because of the Spirit of God that dwells within them. Remember, the Spirit of God is testifying it's the spirit of truth. It brings truth. It, 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 it teaches them. And I, I, I keep saying it. Please forgive me. It is not an it. He is not an it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. It is a person. Okay? And the Spirit of God, um, is it, He comes and lives inside of you. And He teaches you all things everything that you need to know, everything that you need to say. The Spirit of God comes in you and, 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 and you proclaim truth. The Spirit of God comes in you and it, you testify about Jesus Christ. You know about His teachings. You remember His teachings because you have the Word of God and the Spirit of God that moves in you that lets you know what He's saying what he did. You see, when Jesus Christ left, 
and he sent the, the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God gives you power. The, the Spirit of God gives you power and truth, and, and you're able to go and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And through your proclamation of Jesus Christ and the judgment that is coming, the Spirit of God uh, saves. Now, Jesus Christ was here on the earth, and he did all these miraculous things, these great works, right? You would think that there are thousands upon thousands of people that would come to Jesus Christ and say, I believe. But there was just a small handful, probably about 500 people. And, and you think about it, I mean, he had a, he had a, a small group of disciples that he had poured his life into. And then there were those who were disciples that, that weren't more of an intimate with him, that he didn't spend that much time with them. Because there was probably about 120 of those. And then outside of that, it's just people that have believed. But, you know, I remember um, it was a question in seminary and uh, my professor asked me, asked us, if uh, if he, if we think that Christ's ministry was successful. And I thought about that for a minute, and uh, and I said, well, yeah, of course his ministry was successful. I mean, look where we are today, right? I mean, look, look at all the. But what he was saying was is when he was talking about being successful, what he was saying was, if Christ were, uh, if that was the church that he had started, and there was only 120 people at this church, would you say that's a successful church? Would you say that's a successful ministry? And uh, people started scratching their heads, and were like, well, it's okay. I mean, that's great. We would love to have 400, 500, maybe 1,000 people, and then that's what we're thinking, you know. That, that's a successful ministry, right? You got thousands of, of people in your church. Um, but that's not what he was talking about. He was talking about the, um, there was a, just a small handful of people that believed. And, um, and, and, you know, most people today would say, no, his ministry wasn't that great. I mean, as far as the, numbers wise um because we're all about numbers and um so i mean but that that actually made me think that made me think a lot about um i i would love i it, it, i really don't think about um numbers when it comes to church i would love to have uh a, a people coming to christ yes uh, i want to see that i want to see god's god's kingdom grow but man, just give me, give me, give me ten faithful people. Give me, give me twenty faithful people. You know that are just on fire for God. They're faithful, and they desire to to follow God. They desire to do His commandments. They desire to love the brethren. They desire to go out into the community, into the world, on mission trips. They desire these things. They give up their vacation days for, for mission trips. You know, I mean, you think about that. Give me those people that, that desire to, to love God and desire to know Him. Man, I, I just, uh, it stinks when you have to sit here and, you know, kind of prod people along, you know, to, hey, love God, you know, here's, you know, it just it, it kind of as a as a pastor it's just kind of you you have to say okay you have to give grace and you have to give mercy and things like that and these are things that you think of as a pastor you know just keep just some people have little faith some people have a little bit more faith and that kind of thing but but man I just want them to have faith and I want them to be faithful and I want them to just I don't want to have to continue to uh, uh, I, our old pastor JD. Uh, my old pastor J.D. Uh, Greer, uh, he would say, you know, you know, like a balloon, and you come on a Sunday, and I 
pop it, you know, hit you up and you float up and then you kind of start floating down and then you come back next Sunday and I pop you again and he says, I don't want to do that. I want to have to do that. I want you to keep staying up there. You know, I, 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 I don't want to have to keep popping you up to make you float. And, uh, I, you know, at first I, 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 I didn't really think about what he was talking about. Um, but becoming a pastor, I, I see it. I see it. There's this constant, you know, where you're having to, all right, go on, everything's fine. We'll get and then come Sunday, they're like, okay, come on. Or the next Sunday, they're all down. You go, okay, come on down. You go, come up. It's just, uh, I just want, uh, and again, this is my desire. Uh, I may be just sitting here, I don't know, what do you call it? Pouring out my heart, wearing my heart on my sleeve. But I do, I want faithful people. I desire it. Um, Because I look back at at, um, my life, I look back at my wife's life, and I look back at people's lives here at this church that are faithful, and I'm like, man, yes. Keep going. Go, go, go. You're doing great. Um, But, um, again... I may be just sitting here pining away. <laughs> he says, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Again, it's the power of the spirit that dwells within us, that moves us, that gives us life. I mean, you think about it. That he, he teaches us uh, the Word of God. And sometimes you, you may not even remember it. And then all of a sudden you're talking to somebody uh, in the future and you're talking to somebody and you're like, ah, I, it, and, and you give them a verse. And, and you just lay out this verse. And that verse hits them. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. And, uh, and, and it, just, it just, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the power of the Spirit moving. Um, when when people come to life, when you go out and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to these people, and you see life come into them, when you you see where they get it, and you're like, yes, yes, I love that, I love it. Um, people that have come to Christ that uh, that I've led to Christ um, through the Spirit, man, watching them come to life. Uh, it's so exciting, and there is a joy there. There's so much joy there, um, and it's an everlasting joy. I still remember the the people that I've led to Christ. I, I could still remember those days like it was yesterday, but it was the Spirit of God that was moving in me. It was the Spirit of God that did all the work. He just wants me to be willing to go and proclaim. He wants to use you. He wants to 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 use you to go and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ so that work can be done. But here's the thing, is that the Spirit of God moves you to do that as well. So, again, it's the power of the Spirit. Um, I, I, I love it. I love it. The Spirit of God has taught me so much through His Word, through the Word of God, and just laying it on my heart. Um, revealing things to me through God's Word to where I understand it a little bit better each time I study it. Um, it it's, like I said, it, it brings truth. He, it, he teaches. He testifies about Jesus Christ. And then we're going to stop here, but we'll go into conviction. This is what the Spirit of God does. He brings conviction. Now, conviction may not be what you think it is, okay? Um, But we'll talk about that next week, um, and we'll start in verse 8. Hopefully get through with verse (laughs) 8. Yeah, so we should. We should get through some some verses here. But, um, but yeah, so, uh, again, we'll stop here. 
And I want you to know that that Christ knew that when he left, he was going to send the Spirit of God, that these men were, were, were going to be weak, weak men, but the Spirit of God comes upon them, and there is a strength that they've never had before. There is a confidence that they've never had before. There is a power that they've never had before. And it's the same with every believer. There is a strength and a confidence and a, a power that they have, every believer has, by the Spirit of God. And it's for the purpose of proclaiming. It's for the purpose of the kingdom, the mission work. Okay? So, we'll stop there. And uh, I want to thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I want to thank you for listening and studying God's Word. And uh, my prayer is that it sinks deep into your heart, that you not only hear this Word, but that you live this Word, and that you do this Word, okay? Uh, and, and that is my prayer for you. Those who do not believe, those who do not trust God, uh, my prayer is that you come to know Him. That, that he opens your eyes and your ears and softens your heart to where you see the word of God uh, for what it is. And what it is, is truth. Okay? It is truth. And um, but that's my prayer for you. So, having said all that, we'll go to the Lord in prayer and we'll end it tonight. Father, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for um, the spirit that you have sent to us. We know that he is moving in, in those who are alive in you. We know that he is working and doing great work. So, Father, I ask that you, um, that you send the Spirit to those who need to hear. Wake them up. Give them life. Give them ears to hear and eyes to see. And Father, we, we will give you the, the, the blessing and the, the glory and, and we will praise your name because we know that you want fruit. That is why you, you use us. That is the work that you have for us. So Father, I pray that we continue to, to do your work and we continue to, to, to follow you and, and live by your commandments. So we thank you. In Jesus' name we come to you. Amen. All right, Sandy Branch, I love you. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas.